The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien, and uh, we're looking at the uh, the bonds down nine thirty seconds at one hundred fourteen and eighteen thirty seconds. You see this little move up here. Uh, you see this. Thing, this is the daily chart on the left. You see the weekly chart. This arch formation. Let me just complete this arch formation with the the right side of the ellipse right there. So here we go. Arch right there, and arch right there. And so far, it hasn't broken back up again. So the um, nine period moving average in the weekly chart is pink. It's underneath the 14 period moving average. That's a negative. The uh, stochastic's way down to 18%. MACD is actually not too bad. It did cross negative, but it's not too bad. And the on balance volume, the blue line is weak. The daily chart says that if there is to be a rally in the bonds, and I think it's imperative that there's a rally in the bonds, you need to see. Uh, the 100 and all these resistance levels, 115 and 1530 seconds, that's the nine period exponential moving average pink because it's way below the 14, which is at 116 and 630 seconds. You want to see a week of trading in the 116 and a half area. And that'll say, whew, finally, we've got the bond yields coming down and not going up. But the fact is that the um, so there was a report let me just scroll back here thank you in the den i think it was fletch that gave all that information yep there it is breaking u.s macro data released initial jobless claims 212k versus 215k estimate previous was 211k so just a little bit higher actually the big point is it's not going down the jobless claims uh no jobless claims should be going up if the yields are going to come down because the Fed uh, wants to, that's what the Fed would like to see. And um, looking at the continuous jobless claims at 1,812K versus 1818K, estimate was 1817. So there it's just a little bit uh, continuing jobless claims. Yep, that's a little bit better. So that's helping somewhat. And the Philadelphia Fed. Uh, Fed Manufacturing index for April is 15.4 versus 1.15.4 versus 1.5 estimate. Previous was 3.2. Am I reading that correctly? Should that be not 5.4, not 15.4? That is really high. Whoa. Um, I'm not sure how the market will handle that. But in the meantime, those are those are the numbers I, I wanted to give it to you because Tommy always does a fantastic job of giving you all those numbers, putting it to perspective. And also putting into the perspective of the market and what you can, what what would be anticipated from those results, etc. I'm just giving you the numbers. I'm just telling you on a purely technical basis. The TLT. Let's go back to that. I wanted to start off with this because to me this is very important because when you see the iShares Treasury uh, bond ETF start to move sharply higher, so that the TVT, which is the inversion or it's the yield basically starts to come down. I think that's going to be a big deal. So right now there was a very nice turn to the upside. 87.79 was the low today's Thursday. On Tuesday, the Wednesday it did move up. Now it's down just 26 ticks at 89.02. But you really wanted to see a push that fills the gap, starts to trade towards the 90.10. Uh, it doesn't sound like much. It's 89.02, just a point and a quarter. Uh, but it needs to get to the 90.10 to just tag for the first time the pink nine period moving average because since it's gapped down below it way back on the 1st of April when we were trading up in the 93s, 94s, and then it gapped. We haven't touched that pink nine period moving average. And of course, to move higher, you've got to go through the first step, which is uh, 90.10, and the sta second step is 90.77. Day is young. Day has barely begun. In fact, the market hasn't even opened officially. So all I can say is that we're, I'm rewatching watching this very closely. I'm watching two things. One is the bond yields. So let's just go to the TNX for now. This is the TNX is the, uh, there we go. TNX is at, what are we now? We're at 9, 10 a.m. Eastern time. 
uh, 46.14, up 29 cents. So yields are still up there. This is the 10-year uh, Treasury note, right? Um, at 46.14 .40, right now. Made a higher 47, uh, 47.96. Just 46.96. Just missed the round number 47. Talk about round numbers. I want to add this right now. I hope I do it in my show. I hope I don't forget. Look at this. This is Netflix. Netflix comes out with earnings today. Oh, I don't know if we'll have uh, if we'll have a chance to speak with uh, Kevin Hanks. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, so um, Netflix comes out with earnings on the eighth of April. It makes not an all-time high, but a multi-year high. The all-time high was seven hundred point ninety-nine. Missed the round number by a penny. I watch round numbers. It's core to my. It's integral to to my market overviews. Uh, in November of 2021, plunges down to 162 in May of 2022. I would call that a little bit of a plunge. And then it screams back in a very beautiful, just a couple of months, uh, you know, every time it makes a peak, it just it's two, three months, and it's back to the high again, I mean, the recovery high. Now it's stopped dead at the 639.00, round number high of the 8th of April. And it's trading right now at 611. So even there, there's a, almost a, a 20 point pullback. But most importantly, 30 point. Yeah, most importantly, what we're looking at is what happens after this this afternoon. Does I I can't I don't do any of the fundamental work. I'm just looking at the picture of the of the weekly chart. It's been alternating between red candle, green candle, red candle, green candle, but each one seems to be making a higher high. And this one right here, the, that was the high of the, that was March of tw uh, the 22nd, the week of the 22nd. It goes to 634.36, and the very next week it has a high of 634.39. So three cents high. Well, all I can say is it continues that leg, and this is either a G slash C because there was a Chapman Wave instant restart. Yes, I'll put in G slash C. Be ready for anything. Uh, right there. In the weekly chart, the technicals are still extremely strong. A flat stochastic at 91, is that's what you want to see when you are looking at a potential top. You say, well, I don't see the top right now. The on-balance volume did pull back from an overbought situation. But a flat stochastic action. Let me tell you, this is we'll use this as a study piece. Usually, a Friday is technical Friday. I'll do this right now, and it's not even my show. I'm just subbing for this hour for Tommy O'Brien. So, um, we're looking at the stochastic starting round about the week of the 24th of November, where it had that strong move from going very weak under 20% in October to over 80%. I love that, and it's been flat. All this time. So in time, it's starting to run out of upside action in terms of looking at the um, in terms of looking at the duration. Duration is also part of looking at your technical indicators, your technical tools, in this case, the stochastic. But holding above 90 percent is fabulous at 91 percent, almost 92 um, to get this stochastic to drop under 80 percent, which is really the level that that is positive. You would have to see uh, Netflix come out with something that says, uh-oh, down 45 points because of some disappointment. And even then, the 586 is the black 40 period exponential moving average support level. It would have to go way under that to see that 59 go under the 40. So uh, we'll see what happens. But I've got that round number we'll watch. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman singing for Tommy O'Brien, and we're looking at. Uh, I, I just I saw um, uh, Apple had a round number close. Thank you, Pat, for that. Uh, 168.00. It had 169 round number, and I didn't put in whether it was a close or what it was. Uh, 169. Yeah, I don't even know when it was. Yeah, there it is. 169 open. Uh, the day after it made that last low in the 168, 169.00 open on the 8th, and then it had a really good rally to the 178 area, <clears throat> came all the way back down, made a lower low, and a lower low, and then spiked up to the 200 period. Look at that importance of the 200 period moving average. Bam, Re gets repelled. Boom, comes all the way back, and yesterday had round number 168 closed. And the uh, price right now is 167.51. I'm watching this closely. We're actually using a round number <clears throat> low, two round numbers at the lows, in a particular Dow stock uh, bought just the other day because it looked like that was a double bottom and you had the round numbers. And so far, it's acting quite well. So that's all you can do. You use these things and you've got to use them in a particular way. And you just have to have your stops and you just have to treat it as if, okay, this is just one indicator. If it works, it's great. But it is an indicator that has some kind of reliability. Look at this NVIDIA. Whoops, I just went, I moved the screen. Maybe I typed it in probably in the wrong place. Let me try it again. NVIDIA right now is up a little bit, I believe. Yep, up 7 at 847.73. But it had a round number all-time high at 974.00 on the 8th of March. I mean, I've spoken about this for years and years and years and years, but I mentioned over the last 
couple of months, I've never seen this number. Actually, ever since January, we started seeing round numbers. And then all those stocks, like you remember MSTR? Uh, MSTR is Monster, oh, it's Monster, MicroStrategy, A shares, data accessibility, of AI, etc. Look at that. The date made its all time high of 199.99, missed it by one penny. It also had 100, uh, 1953 open and a 1942 low that day. And ever since then, it's been down, 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 and it's trading now at 1188. 1188, I would call that a, a decline from a round number high. All right, and let's get back to our story here. I, I, I'm anticipating there'll be some attempt to move the markets higher. Um, how successful will it be? We do have the Dow up 146 now. I wonder what that is. Um, I don't have update. I don't think this is updated. The charts on my left of the Dow. Hmm, I don't know. All right, uh, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, I am anticipating that the testing of this, the 200 period moving average in the futures right here, look at this B, now it's going to leg C in the five minute chart. Oh, nice move. Oh, and I didn't get a chance to put in a position. Ah, well, that's the way it goes. A, B. A, a B in the, uh, in the 10 minute chart. All right, we'll get back to all of these because I need to finish a bunch of things. So let me do this. Here we go. So we're looking at I'll do them right now. So you've got the YM, that's the futures of the Dow, up a little bit. Ah, now it's a nice green candle, up 150, but not yet above yesterday's high. So really got quite a bit to go. And you've got a little double bottom attempt at right here in the on balance volume, making that little W pattern. We'll see if we can keep rallying. It's so oversold. I mean, there's no question that there could be a, a decent rally here, but I'm not sure this is the rally that takes us back to the highs. I think this is just a bounce. In the meantime, uh, the E-mini is up now 13. It's lagging a lot. NQ, that's the NASDAQ, is up 28, also lagging a lot, not doing very well at all, 17,006. Let's look at the semiconductors. Semiconductors uh, down 91 cents today. The SMH is at 211.49. We've been very negative this since the 239.14 August. Uh, August. This is March, the um, 8th of March high. It's made the dreaded H pattern, comes down, makes an arch formation, fails at a peak B, goes to peak B minus because it takes out the left side low. And look, he has the same thing in the weekly chart. So we can even get a rotation here. Um, I, what would move up? So let's just look at Home Depot. Ooh, ugly chart. Up 17 cents right now, 333.00 round number. God, I can't believe how many round numbers, even pre-market these days I'm seeing. And that's, I call that, there's a desperation when people, when you have a, a round number, just say, get me in it, whatever, get me out or whatever it is. And you don't even say point whatever, what, whatever it would be, 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or 0 0.5. Uh, you just say at 123, get me out. And that's, you know, that's fear of missing out, either up or down. And that's the way I'm looking at this. Uh, it's probably a whole psychological study that one could do there not in my department. So, okay, now let's get back to the, what we were looking at, gold. Uh, gold's holding well, it's up 16, walking the nine period exponential moving average. Look at this beautiful thing. Cross positive right there back in the beginning of March, and that nine is still very strong above the 14. What, what a nice indicator. So I thought I'd just do this now because um, with Tommy's show, um, Maybe I, we've got new people listening. So here's the SMH. Look, except for this one brief one or two day period back in January, ever since it flipped green back in November, that green nine period moving average has been the dominant theme. And only lately has it gone pink with the price coming down. That is a big negative. Uh, this is the daily chart. And I've got only three lines here. This is the price of whatever we're following, the thick gray line, green is the nine period moving average if it's above the 14 and pink is when it goes below. But wait a minute, let's just go through them all. Let's go through the YM, which is the Dow. Look at the, oh no, the Dow itself, it has a slightly different picture. Look, the Dow didn't go pink once, ever since the 3rd of November, but it did go right there. So we've been short the Dow for a while. Uh, we consider that a shorter. We've got long-term longs. I'm not touching the long-term longs. Even the UDOW we've got since October of 2022. It's just, you hear the ads all the time. This is a daily trading vehicle, but we've kept that one, and it's done really well, very nice. It's doubled, in fact. Um, so now what we're looking at is 
the uh, uh, the um, the Dow is negative. The S and P. Let's go to the E. No, we go to the S and P. This is the S and P right there. The S and P negative. The QQQ NDX 100 trading vehicle negative. IWM negative. Look how you had to wait for these things to turn. Uh, the what was oh IAI, which is really important. It was negative just for a brief period early in January, but from the uh, November crossover, that was the only period was negative, and then it went green, and now it's back to negative with a much deeper correction. And if the brokers are negative, to me, if the brokers are negative, if the yields are going up, and if the semiconductors have pulled to uh, reverse from positive to negative, that and the XLF, look at this, the XLF, the financials went negative the other day. The financials, the S&P um, fi Select Financial Index has not been negative since it crossed positive on November the 3rd. I, I'm taking this seriously. I'm sorry. That's just the way I use my techniques. This is not a good sign. Shorter term. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Dow's up 125, S&P's only up to the Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right. That means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the live trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he plays his trades live. See you there, Tigers. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. And what are we, have we opened? There's the market open, 9.30. Bing, yep, the Dow's up 138. Let's just go through these now. I'm going to, this is really important because we've got to have follow-through by 10.20 today. Otherwise, it's going to be another disappointing. Every day it's been trying to rally and then they fail. Um, 
Now, what we're looking at, uh, I just before I do anything else, in the den, someone mentioned, uh, Jimmy had mentioned something about copper, and I said there's a, there is an ETF, it's a fund, the U.S. Copper Index Fund, it's called, it's, it's uh, CPER is the symbol, it's a 2755, I was waiting for this to get to a leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology above the high that was made on the, <clears throat> on the, fifth, on the 15th of 2745 and today we made that. Here's the interleg D in Chapway methodology. The idea is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode and that implies that it should go to at least four higher peaks to a, a leg D and then make a peak D. <laughs> and then you've got to be a little careful. And it's leg E in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly and the all time high was at a peak C and then it pulled back really sharply from just over 30 back in, uh, this is the copper index, uh, 30.2 one, two, back in March of 2022, had a little bit of a tumble, and it goes down from the 30 level <clears throat> to 22.02 in June of 2022, and now it's come all the way back to 27, doing very nicely. Now, let, let, let me, so should I do that now? I think I'll do that. I'll, I'll probably repeat it in my show, but I, I need to just do this because it's part of the methodology that I use. It's part of looking at markets. So now we've got the market open and the Dow is you the Dow is up quite nicely. It's up 153 at uh, 37,909. So I needed just to go through this. I, I'll start off by because for some of you are new maybe to my work, you listen to Tommy all the time, but uh, so I came on to sub for him. Today, and I'm just going to go through if I can find, there it is, click. Okay. In the Chamberlain methodology, we try to identify the lowest low. And then every higher peak is alphabetized, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's at that fourth highest peak that you've got to be careful. But the way you get there is that from that lowest low, if there's a rally and then that rally takes out by one penny, that starting point, that's done. You have to start all over again. So if it holds, it doesn't tell you the depth of each decline from the peak. It just tells you you've got to hold that low, the initial low. If it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, the implication is that it should go to at least, it can go much higher, but at least to four higher peaks. And then you've got to be a little bit careful. So in this particular regard, what we've got is, now it gets a little complicated only because this peak went to a peak C, at 39,889 on the 21st of March, and then it pulled back, and then it retested just 20 points less. And I said that in Chapman methodology gives you a legitimate way of looking at it as a peak C1 and a peak C2, because the technicals did rally. They didn't rally all that well, but they did rally. And it, it looked like it could have gone to a D. It just failed in price. And that said to me, that's your double top. So we went short, and we've been short this uh, long term, long positions, nothing there. We're not touching that. But short in the shorter term, short doesn't mean to say, oh, it's a three day, two day. It means in the shorter term. We haven't got any indication yet in the weekly chart. We're getting close, but we haven't got it yet. Now I need to talk weekly charts because this is important because everything I discussed now is in relation to the Chapman Wave methodology. <clears throat> so you have to find a peak D. Every once in a while, there's a double top by exactly to the penny, or there's a fractional low like it was here. But the only time I call it um, a phantom peak, this peak C1 and peak C2, is at that peak C. But there's another technique that says, if there's a little hiccup in one of my technicals, the on-balance form, this is the weekly chart, or the stochastic, or something like that, you've got to have a hiccup. It gives you, it legitimizes you calling that because it's fractionally lower. That I can call as a peak. And then I put it in red to say, in the Chapman Wave methodology, this is not a legitimate thing, but it is a part of the methodology as a subsidiary technique. So if the reason why I wanted to do that is that we've gotten to that peak D in the weekly chart. The technicals are starting to make these pull back. The stochastics way under 80% to 62%. On balance volume made a peak and then it pulled back sharply. But that nine is still moving very nicely. So I've said, you've got to have confirmation. Well, where's the confirmation? 
The confirmation is in the YM, the Dow futures, that went to a peak, a very legitimate peak D, right there. And now we're pulling back. And that says to me, that's one step that says, okay, now your weekly charts, were, which were looking fantastic, be careful. But wait a minute, what if I go to the world, the Vanguard total world stock ETF? I get a peak, a very perfect peak E in the in the daily chart at 110.74, double top from the 110.73 high three days or four days before. This all says, hey, you got to be careful. And now it's in a sell mode in the daily. This is still a single leg A to the downside. That's amazing. Now, a single leg A to the downside says when it's done, be careful. You can have a pretty decent rally, but we haven't got there yet. Um, oh, 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 I was all ready to do a bunch of stuff today. All right, well, that's the way it goes. Um, the, the VT, the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, made a peak E, a very legitimate peak E with a very strong three red candles so far. This is not even the end of the week. We still got a day, two days to go, basically. And a peak C in the uh, Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. Just had a call from a, a really a dear friend um, who. Um, has been in the market just forever, uh, who called me to say in the Wall Street Journal, he was reading an article on Lindsay's Three Peaks in a Dome. Now, I had somewhere around here, a dear friend, another dear friend of mine, a long time ago, gave me his all his notes that he had uh, when he signed, signed up with Lindsay for it. Um, and so in the, in the, it's very interesting because uh, what Bob was telling me, is that there, it just so much looks like three peaks in a dome. It means you can still go higher, but you've achieved a whole bunch of things. Anyway, let's get back to the story here. So this is a, P, a leg C. It hasn't made a peak C yet in the monthly chart, and that says it sh should still go to a D. That means Vanguard Total Wool Stock ETF should still go to higher highs in 2024. Wanted to get that out the way. Now let's get back to our story. I, I don't want to go through everything other than to say the E-mini, um, has gone to a peak D. Uh, the S&P cash has not. It's at a C. So I, I, yeah, I have to say, well, not everything's working, uh, it, but a lot is. Look at the QQQs. Uh, peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly. Uh, look at the SMHs. Finally, we've got ourselves the peak D at 239.14, all-time high um, on the 8th of March. And now they pull it. Oh, look at that pulling back sharply, um, and I've been talking about this for days. We, we've been short every once in a while, with the, uh, short the semis. Look at this, uh, Van X Semiconductor, peak C in the monthly. That says we should still, in 2024, go to higher highs. All right, I want to get that out of the way just to say, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I'm trying to use these indicators, that wave indicators that I've used for, for many years, and to put them into perspective publicly. I, I usually do some of this and I do it kind of quite in my own way. A question about ARM, ARM. Yep, round number high, all time high, 164.00 on the 12th of Feb. And here it is, 103 targeting 88. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So I had a question that Dan uh, Duncan wants to know about um, ARM. ARM Holdings PLC semis had a round number 164.00 high back on the 12th of February. It's trading right now at 103. I would say a 60-point decline at uh, significantly tells you about those round numbers. And where where should it go? I'm using this technique that I use very often. I'm going to go from there to there. That's called the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. I don't know if it will hit it, but this, this is pointing to pink. Make it dashed. Whoops. Dash, dash, dash style. There it is. Dashed. Okay. That says by the um, 24th, is that right, 24th of April? Oh, that's uh, almost a week. I, I would say it's probably quicker than that. But anyway, the target is the base of the um, gap up of the 8th of Feb, which was at 94.00 uh, round number. I mean, these zero round numbers, unbelievable. Um, that would be the target. But 88 is the 200 period moving average. So looking out over about a, two weeks or so, this can get there much quicker. It's already down four today. Um, that would be my target. The upside resistance is the 110, 112 area. No, 110, I'd say. Uh, what was your question? Oh, you're not in it. Yeah, that's the way I'm looking at it. I believe it's going down. This, the, these two bars back in February where it went from the what was it, 62 or something? What was a very low number? 71.60 level, uh, the week of the 9th of Feb, and it runs up from, let's call it 72, to the round number 164. I mean, it's more than a double. And now it's coming back very sharply. Yeah, just be really careful with the stuff. Now, let's just go through a couple of things. Why, why do I make a big deal about the semiconductors? Because semis lead us up, semis lead us down. Oh, I don't know if I'll find it. Maybe I'll do my show at 10 o'clock if I can find the chart where I have. Nah, I haven't got it there. I'll have to look to see if I've got it. I have the semis. Oh, I do have it. Oh, I, I think I can place it in my mind exactly where it is. Now I've just got to find which file. Uh, I'll do that uh, for my show if I can. Um, because where the semis go, remember, I, I look at the semis as the, 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 the chip sector is the oil sector of the 1900s. In the 21st century, going on for uh, who knows how long, chips are going to be the thing. All right, so now you've got oil, which is, is very important, but it's starting to diminish, and semiconductors, which were very important, and they are increasing in, um, in the importance in the world, not just the economy, but in the world, just all these different sectors that uh, that you can find 
what you're looking at is that semis are, are more and more in automobiles and uh, just in everything. All right, enough with that. Um, yeah, ah, so you did catch it earlier on, but now you're looking to see. You know, I don't know if it's too late because I think the momentum actually is starting to increase the downside. And as a sector, look, NVIDIA probably was up about 12, and now what is it doing? It's only up. It's unchanged. And it's going low, making lower lows and lower highs. And uh, just consider that that sector had such a spectacular run. Look at the monthly chart. Look, it's almost like a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Uh, and look, what's fascinating, you see this E right here, which corresponds to that E. That's the split. This is where the, I, I do every note, every single, every single one of these things. Look at this right here. Every single one of those notations. And you can go back forever. Because I'm always doing the notations of the one and the five minutes and the ten. If I'm not trading, I'm notating it. Charts. Uh, it just goes on forever. Every every note, every unlike Steve Rhodes, who's been able to automate the Chapman wave. Um, I I I've not been satisfied with the that because there are subtleties that every once in a while are just so important that if it, it becomes a big factor, and that is the part that's really hard to program, but I can program it in a split second in my mind. So you see, look, right now we're starting to leg B in the one minute chart. So let's go back to what we were looking at. Um, and what I was saying is, this is still from when I hand notated way back when it was split. I'm not going to go through when it was split. Huge uh, something for one, what was it, 10 for one or five for one, whatever it is. And now what I love about splits, you can see this in Apple. Apple, which had a round number uh, low, uh, round number close yesterday. Um, I don't know if I've still got it. I should have it. Yeah, there it is. Look, yes, all this is all Apple's notations. There's an instant restart right there. All Apple's notations way up there because that's where Apple was before it split. I should get rid of it, but you know what? It's kind of fun. Doesn't interfere, look, doesn't interfere at all. All right, let's get back to our story. And our story is that the Dow is moving uh, a little bit better. Now it's, no, it's not better. It's actually at 129. And um, no, I don't want to take time now. This is Tommy's show, and Tommy usually goes through all, all the pertinent uh, areas. So let's go to the pertinent areas. Amazon. Amazon right now is trading down 23 cents at 181.05. It hit 189.77 on the 11th. It's trading now at 181. Peak E. But look at this daily chart. See this little doji candle here and the pullback? So this is what says to me that under other circumstances, this is just a beautiful move to look at these tiny candles to the upside. Occasionally you'll have a little bit deeper, but then it quickly fills it up and goes up, 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 up. It does make peaks, but it has a one-week distance sometimes, maybe two, between peaks. That's amazing. And then I started an alternate account here. So this is a peak E at 145.86, pulls back. Where to the 200-period moving average? You don't need it until you need it. Boom, it springs up. And now it's in this leg potential peak E in the weekly chart. Just from the visuals, from the daily and the weekly, and I drew this rectangle and when someone asked me about it the other day, I said, this is the area I'm thinking that it should trade in. And that was when it was probably pulling back over there. And we haven't gotten to the base, but the base says that there's a chance that Amazon, after such a big move, is going to have a digestive phase. 178 is kind of the area of support. If it takes that out, then I think that weekly chart is going to have more than a, a one red candle. I think it might be two red candles, or maybe three. And then maybe you start up again. But look at this weekly chart. 188.65 was the all-time high, July of 2021. Plummets down to 81. That's over 100 points down. Then it goes back 100 points up because what does it do? It goes to 189.77. 189.77 is a dollar and less. Than, it's like a less than a dollar and a quarter from the all-time high. So all I can say is um, this is exactly where you would start to find some kind of resistance in that area. Let me just check here. I just had a little ping for my. My producer, we got Mike in Kansas City. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Hey, uh, very quickly, because I know we're coming up on the end of the show. Um, 
I got into HMY back in February of this year. Nice. I've been looking at the weekly chart from a Chapman, Chapman Wave perspective. And, you know, when I look at the weekly, the, the most recent, you know, peak we made last week, that's either an F or an A. I mean, my reading of the technicals, I mean, that's got to be an A on the weekly. And so I'm trying to figure out how do I add to my position uh, from your perspective. Thanks. Mike, hold on. We'll be right back. Good question. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're on with Mike in Kansas City. Mike, I'm looking at HMY, Harmony Gold Area Mines, uh, ADR. I think as a teenager, I used to live in near one of those. I lived in a mining town. I think Harmony was part of it. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at this, and I'm going to tell you that the, the most recent all-time high was back in uh, 2011, up in the 17s. It plummeted down to the, uh, what was it, two-something? Uh, oh, sorry, 53 cents uh, back in uh, uh, 2016. So this is a huge move up. I like it very much. I think it's a, a great chart formation. I've got it in the daily. Uh, there's no other way I could count it. as a, I've got it as a peak C. But the weekly chart, oh, yeah, the weekly chart, correct, F slash A because it made a lower low. I just wanted to double check on that. That was uh, 540 and then 5. 41, 540. Yes, correct. No, no. I, I had this as a B. It's an F slash B. If you go back, you'll see the weekly chart made a penny lower. So um, 
I like this very much. I think it's going higher. But what I wanted to tell you is there's – I don't want to get into it. Maybe in my show I'll try to talk about it. There's a, there's a potential for a, an instant, a flat-based restart, and I have to talk about that. But in the meantime, it's acting really well. It's down two cents. And – the whole area between 850 and 820, that's to me to be a containment area in the next week and a half. I don't know if that helps you, but that's what I'm looking at. And I suspect that even if it pops over 9, 980 to go to a leg D, uh, that, that's, that, that would raise the base. I think gold is in because of the Middle East situation. Until there's a, a window of peace or at least quietness, Gold is in play. So if, if there's a window of quietness, it could drop very quickly. But that whole area between 8 I'd, I'd say all the way to $8, $8.20 to $8 should be very strong support over the next week or so. I don't know if that helps you, but that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, it, it helps me. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is where, you know, where would be some good buy limits on a longer term basis to just put the orders in and if they get hit great i mean maybe look at the nine ema on the weekly and just put yes. the orders in around that. you know what i'll do that in my show coming up at some point i'll do that so if you can still listen that's great but I i'll try to do that in the show thank you for calling Thanks, uh, folks i'll be back in a few moments for my show the tiger technicians hour about